Hi, my name is Emmanuel Obodo. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. I completed my PhD in biomedical science. I have extensive experience working in NHS hospital as a specialty biomedical scientist. I have used these experiences to help a number of people navigate through interview questions and therefore get their dream job as a biomedical scientist. I'm here to help you navigate interview questions, thereby increasing your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. What I would ask is that you like, share, comment and subscribe to our page. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, so um, today we are going to be looking at blood transfusion. So we are starting today, okay? I know that many of you have been waiting to hear something about blood transfusion. Honestly, I left it towards the end because we are going to be talking a lot, okay? So I really want to make sure that I give it the detailed attention that it requires. I know that it's one of the challenging questions when you go for your interview. Don't worry, I'm going to navigate you through each of the questions and you will be fine, okay? So let's get into it. Today, I'm going to start with sample acceptance. Can I just give you a little story? In an NHS hospital, we have specimen reception, okay? In the specimen reception, they are the ones that can receive sample for hematology, biochemistry, coagulation, microbiology, immunology. But when it comes to blood transfusion, we have our own reception. In fact, it will interest you to know that it's, it's biomedical scientists that can also be the specimen reception, that will also work in the specimen reception. So when you come to the blood bank, a biomedical scientist, it doesn't matter whether it's a specialist biomedical scientist or a senior biomedical scientist, they can be in specimen reception because we treasure that very important. Okay? So when it comes to blood bank, yes, anybody can work in specimen reception, unlike maybe in other department okay so now what do we mean when we say sample acceptance you may go for an interview they ask you what is a sample acceptance in blood transfusion this is your answer when they ask you that question they are looking at identifiers i'm also going to try to tell you that in other department or other unit like hematology okay we want maybe at least two identifiers Maybe once we have the full name, NHS number, or hospital number, or date of birth, that is fine. Any of them is fine, okay? But when it comes to the blood bank or blood transfusion, we want the three identifiers. We want the name correctly written. For example, in hematology, even if they make a mistake with one letter of the name, we may still accept it. Provided that the NHS number is correct or hospital number is correct or maybe the date of birth is correct or something like that But when it comes to blood bank, we are very strict. The name must be well written For an example, you know that Steven can be spelled as S-T-E-V-E-N And also you can spell Steven as S-T-E-P-H-E-N if the person's name on the record is V-E-N and you use P-H-E-N, we will reject it. Okay? Also, if you look at Williams, some people's Williams can be spelled as W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. If you go and write William, which is W-I-L-L-I-A-M, no S. If the person's record carries Williams, not William, we'll reject it. So we pay attention to all the details. So what is a sample acceptance in blood bank? There must be five identifiers. Some people call it five, but I like to call it three identifiers. I'll explain why. So the identifiers has to do with, there has to be the name, the first name and the surname correctly written. Okay? Then the date of birth must be correctly written. Then the NHS number or hospital number must also be correctly written. Okay, for me, that is a three major identifier, but people call it five identifier because in blood bank we want the phlebotomy or the nurse or the doctor, whoever that collected the sample, we want the person to sign it and also put the date. 
Okay, so you can say the identifier of the sample can be five, the name of the patient, correctly written first and the second name, and also the date of birth, the hospital number or NHS number, and the person that takes the sample need to sign it and date it. So my answer when I like to give such, if I'm giving such question, I will say that the sample acceptance is that there, there has to be three major identifiers, which are the name of the patient, both first and second name were written, hospital number or NHS number were written, date of birth were written, preferably the sample should be signed and dated by whoever that takes the samples, okay? So that's the sample acceptance. The next thing I would like to talk to you about is the blood product within the laboratory, within blood bank. Unlike in other countries where we transfuse whole blood, we don't transfuse whole blood here. We transfuse the blood in parts. So we transfuse red blood cell differently. Then we transfuse platelets. We transfuse cryo precipitate and fibrinogen. Okay, so they are the different blood products. Okay, now meaning when you want to transfuse, remember that in blood, antigen A and antigen B, you will see them on the surface of the red blood cells. While antibody A and antibody B, you see it in the plasma. Therefore, when you are issuing blood, if you are issuing red blood cell, your concern should be the antigen. And if you are issuing other products like FFP, cryoprecipitate, or platelet, your concern should be what? Antibodies. I'm going to look that in detail. But for today, I want you to look at the storage condition of this very product. Number one. What is the storage condition of the red blood cells? Okay, the storage condition of the red blood cell is between 2 degree to 8 degree. Between 2 degree to 8 degree. Sometimes, they may want to ask you something about what if the temperature is now like 7 point something, what are you going to do? Or maybe it's like maybe, maybe 2.2, what are you going to do? Listen, in the NHS hospital, we set the fridge. So once the, the temperature starts going above, three, you know, it's supposed to be between 3, 4, something like that. Once it starts going like 5, 6, or maybe it starts going like maybe 2.5, okay, the thing will start alarming. It is up to you to start investigating why. So you need to take care of the situation before it gets to maybe 8 or it gets to what, 2. Anyway, the storage condition of red blood cell is between 2 to 8 degrees. Okay, now what about platelet? Platelet is stored at the room temperature, which can be between 20 to 22 degrees as well. Okay, so when it comes to FFP and cryoprecipitate, okay, their normal storage temperature will be minus 25. Okay, in some cases, people might say minus 30 and so on, but yeah, minus 25, okay, can be stored, I think, up to 36 months. Okay. But can I also tell you something a little bit different that is not a common thing that people do mention. Remember that this FFP and cryoprecipitate, they are frozen plasma. They are kind of frozen, okay? So because they are frozen, you are not going to transfuse patient frozen product. So you need to thaw it, you need to defrost it, okay? So when you defrost it, the temperature storage differs. With FFP, when you defrost FFP, you can store it under the normal fridge temperature, like maybe 2 to 6 or 2 to 8, as the case may be, degree centigrade. So you store normal FFP that is defrosted, you can store it in a fridge, you can store FFP that is defrost or thawed, you can store it in a fridge between 2 degree to 8 degree, and it should stay up to maybe 24 hours. In some places, they want it to just be 20 hours, okay? But 24 hours is okay. While when it comes to cryoprecipitate, if you talk cryoprecipitate, please don't put it in the fridge. So for cryoprecipitate, if you, after you've defrosted it or you've thawed it, the temperature storage is a room temperature, which can be between 20 to 22 or 18 to 22, depending, okay? But then it has to be used within four hours. So that is for cryoprecipitate, okay? Can also give you additional information when it comes to platelets, okay? Platelets, remember that platelets function is for blood clotting. 
So we don't want the platelet to stay one place like other product. If it stays one place, it can activate clot. It can start forming clot. Okay. So because of that, we put platelet on what we call agitator incubator. So it will be agitating the platelet. Okay, it will be agitating the platelet, making sure that it does not give any room for that platelet to be activated. Can I also mention something different? Remember that platelet is a cell, but why are we bothered about the anti A or anti B? We are bothered because platelet is mixed with plasma here. Okay, so it's mixed with plasma to preserve that platelet. Okay. And that is why, because of that plasma that is mixed with, that's why we are concerned about the antibody. So here you go. That is what you've got when it comes to something like your sample acceptance or the storage of each of the blood product. Thank you very much. I'm going to be taking this gradually to get to every aspect of the blood transfusion. I want you to continue to look forward for the videos and continue to subscribe, like, share till I come your way again. Thank you very much. Bye.